Richard, obviously the uh, the meat um, on all three of these guys, I, I think you, you kind of spelled out in the, in the release. And, and I want to start with KJ, though. Um, I know you have a couple guys that you're bringing in that can't shoot. And um, Jalen has a, a good percentage, but not on the volume KJ has. Um, how, how much of the rest of his game applied and how much of it was just that the guy hit 93 pointers in the season? It's a little bit of everything. Um, you can never add too much shooting. Um, you know, and I told our staff that I said, you know, clearly last year we were not very good shooting the three. Um, if we can add that skill level of being able to shoot the basketball, um, as well as do other things, you know, I don't want one dimensional players when I'm putting to get a, together a roster, I try very, very hard to not say, okay, we're good at that spot. We don't need to add anything else. I want versatile players, uh, who can do a little bit of everything. Um, KJ really, really fits that gym rat mentality that we want. Um, he works his butt off. He's a high character kid. Certainly, yes, he can make the three, but I think he's more than that, you know? So we want to add guys who can shoot the basketball for sure, but we want basketball players. And, you know, I feel like with KJ, he's that. He's not just, you know, a one trick pony. Yeah, I mean, I, you evaluate last year, and then you want to know the story behind it. You know what I mean? Because he was a really good junior college player. And then all of a sudden you go, wow, he was at the Division II level. Uh, you're seeing more and more stories like that, you know, of um, especially with the portal and the way it is, of some really good players who are coming from Division II, Division III, junior college. Um, the game is changing. It used to be kind of high school kid or bust for a lot of Division I basketball. It's definitely where everybody's a lot more open to it. Um, and KJ's story, you know, speaking to his coaches is just works his butt off. He's got a, you know, like a pro's mindset of a, he comes in early, he stays after late. Um, you know, his, his, his actions are in alignment with his goals and that's what you want. Um, so he, he's, a, there's no surprise that he's turned himself into a really good player because he absolutely works his butt off, and he's very, very disciplined. Yeah, Jethro was a kid that, um, I mean, that was one of those, you know, you try not to get too disappointed in recruiting, um, but we poured our heart and soul into him at, at Minnesota. And... Um, came down to us in Kansas and Kansas State. He had a lot of great options. And obviously Kansas is one of the best, you know, programs in all college basketball. Uh, it was tough for him to pass up. Um, but, you know, it, it was one of those, I thought we did a really good job recruiting him. We built a terrific relationship with him. Um, and when he hit the transfer portal, he knew he had a head coach who was recruiting him here at New Mexico who believed in him. Um, so, I didn't have to sell him on what I thought he could become uh, because he knew that. You know, we were we were devastated when he chose Kansas over Minnesota. Um, so now uh, it, maybe it's a little bit of fate that I get an opportunity to coach him again. Um, he's got size. Uh, you know, his best days of basketball are ahead of him. He plays really hard. Uh, certainly he didn't play a lot at Kansas. They had some really good big guys, um, you know, but – I look at it like he had an opportunity to get coached by one of the best coaches out there, especially with big men, um, you know, at a high school, at a prep school. So he was one when he hit the portal. Uh, I really recruited him hard, told the assistants, like, I got this one. You can help me out. But um, we really locked in on him and uh, I think just built trust. I think that was the thing with Jethro more than anything was he knows I'm a fan of his. Um, he knows what I think of what he could become. You know, he, he understands the fan base. He understands the tradition here at New Mexico and how much they care about basketball. And um, so we're excited to have him on board. And do you uh, expect some of the guys who were from last season, some of those guys to not stay? Uh, because he's going to get a little crowded there. Uh, sure. 
Yeah, I think you'll see here soon, uh, you know, uh, that that'll happen. You know, I don't know. I mean, I think it's uh, – I think the biggest thing that we set out to do was was get good basketball players, bring in basketball players. Um, we have, especially from last year's team, uh, a lot of wings. You know, we had a lot of kind of six, five guards, wings, you know. Um, so I just – I told my staff, don't get caught up in, you know, this or that or like, – like, let's get the best collection of guys who are – kind of in alignment with the way we're thinking. They want competition. They want to get better. They want to win. Um, and whoever's on board's on board, you know. So uh, we'll see. I mean, I'll have a better feel for all of it in June um, when you're adding so many new players and you're trying to, you know, turn around a, a program that only won six games. I mean, it's not going to be a overnight fix. That, that's unrealistic. So um, I'm excited to get everybody here in June. Uh, and, uh, you know, build our culture from day one and get these guys all bought in and get them uh, pulling in the right direction and to turn this thing around. What kind of player is Todd? He's kind of like you said in the sense of guard size. Um, he, he could play multiple positions. He's very good at getting to the basket. Um, you know, he's got good length. You know, his wingspan is bit long. Um, he can disrupt defensively. He can play in ball screens. You know, my goal is always to have three, if not four, guys who can come off of ball screens. Um, you know, so Taron would beat out a lot of good programs for. Uh, I felt like he felt like um, what he was looking for was very, very similar to what we were looking for. That's the best kind of recruitment, you know. I mean, you, you need to both be uh, on the same page of what it is. So uh, I think he's an impact guy. Um, I can't wait for him to get here, get to work with him, because his skill set is, is very, very intriguing for what it was that I was looking for to kind of round out that class. Yeah, Kurt and Hassan uh, will transfer. Um, uh, McQuatch, is, uh, his intentions are to go pro, you know, to play overseas. Um, he's been great. You know, they've all been great. They really have. So uh, I didn't know if those first two had hit the portal or not, you know, so I wanted to confirm that. Um, and, and, and Quach it will, uh, you know, he's, he's given New Mexico a lot. You know, I, I did my best. I tried uh, to keep him, but certainly understand – um, you know, what he, he wants to do moving forward, and I support him. I support them all, uh, you know, in their, in their next uh, destination, wherever it is. So you've got some holes left in this roster. How many, how many spots do you So we wouldn't – we would, we'd be full. We'd be at 13. Yeah. Okay. You never know, though, in the world of recruiting. <laughs> uh, with a couple of these guys, I just know some U and M connections, so I'm curious, like – Thomas, like, it, you probably didn't have to sell him too much on, on UNM, I wouldn't think, but I want to ask you about that with him and yeah. Darren having played for a TCU, two former longtime Lobo assistant coaches. Um, did, did their understanding of the pit and the program come up before you had to start selling it? Yeah, 100%. That, that's why it's so very important. Now, Jethro, we had had a past, uh, obviously, with the Minnesota connection, but we have to recruit Texas. We have to recruit California, Southern California. We have to recruit Arizona, Colorado, because, you know, we certainly here know how great this home court advantage is in the pit. I believe it's a top five home court advantage in all of college basketball. But the whole country may not know that. But when you reach out to some of these AAU programs in Texas and you reach out to some of these AAU programs in Southern California, they've had past players who've had great success here. You know, Kendall Williams, right? I mean, a really good player. We, we need to recruit the programs where their players have come out of those AAU programs, have great success in New Mexico. That is the key to this whole thing. The guys that have had past great experiences, 
their coaches, high school, AU, junior college, have had great experiences at New Mexico, 1,000% can help. And it has. Well, as I said before, um, you know, we're currently at our, our 13. Um, now, every coach right now, if they don't have their antennas up just for the way everything is evolving um, in recruiting and so on, you just, it never stops, um, certainly, uh, because of the transfer portal. Uh, I'm really excited about the group that we put together. Uh, I think we've got our returners, our great people they've got high character they've gotten six seven weeks of some really good work with us uh, so they understand somewhat of what we're looking for um, but we haven't even begun to build the culture together that needs to be built um, so that'll start in June you know when everybody gets here for summer school that's why it's so beneficial to get them here um, to go along with you know hopefully safely restrictions ease to where they can feel comfortable in the environment at New Mexico. Um, but that's where the summer school and the fall are so very important. Um, but when you're bringing in so many players like we're bringing, it's going to take some time for everybody to gel. But uh, that summer will be very beneficial for our program. Good. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not... We haven't gotten the, all the contracts yet to be able to announce, um, but we're working really hard on that, you know, I mean, and uh, putting together the best possible schedule we can get. And when those contracts get signed, we'll make sure to get them out and get them announced. Your dad's on the schedule, right? <laughs> they, there has not been a contract signed with Iona. <laughs> not yet. But, you know, that's something we're certainly um, – we want to make it work for everybody. There's just so many moving parts that go into scheduling with – dates and you know i also you know i want to i want to get him to the pit i want our fans to experience and i want him to see it you know i told him he wanted to play a neutral site game i'm like i want you to see some of the best fans in all of college basketball and uh you know so hopefully we can pull it off coach how much of your day is uh, working on the schedule it's becoming more and more of it you know i wanted to when i got here i wanted to get a staff in place I wanted to get to know our current players. Uh, then I wanted to, you know, somewhat turn the page to recruiting as well as, you know, building what we have here um, and then kind of turn our focus to scheduling. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's every day. You, you're, you're coaching your current players. Um, you are building relationships and recruiting. You're doing the schedule. You're trying to get out in the community safely as much as you possibly can. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's every day. Well, I want depth everywhere. Um, I, I had two teams at Minnesota that I thought were top 20 teams that got ruined by lack of depth. Um, so when people always ask me, what did you learn from Minnesota? We, we didn't have depth. I mean, we had, um, we had a team last year that beat five ranked teams that got decimated by losing two starters, a top uh, guy off the bench, and you know we really struggled. So uh, as I said before, like I want versatile pieces um, that can play multiple positions because – you never know what happens with injuries. You never know what happens with foul trouble. Uh, all those things. So um, I like the pieces that we added with, with, with Jay and Jethro in the front court. Um, and, you know, Rod and, and, and Valdir and Emmanuel and some of those guys I really like as well. So um, I'm not looking at every guy we bring in, those are the guys and the guys left over or the back. I'm not looking at it like that. Uh, I tried to get as many – players that are in alignment with what we're looking for and let's get to work come June, you know, to, to build this thing. So I'm, it's, it's just so early to tell, you know, I mean, we're all kind of guessing right now, but luckily we've got a couple months obviously to work with these guys before uh, it really, really gets serious. Did you know that? 
I'll take baby Barkley. I did not know that, but if he's like Charles Barkley, uh, I will take him. Uh, what I would tell you about uh, football players playing basketball and basketball players playing football, they all think it's very easy. Um, it's not as easy as they think. Uh, I would say this. If, if that young man signed up to play for Coach Gonzalez, uh, I want him to be 100% committed to helping Coach Gonzalez uh, win football games. Uh, that needs to be the, the focal point for him uh, because I'm rooting for, for Coach. Um, I want him to turn this thing around. He's, he's been awesome. Uh, so, you know, if he signed on to play football, go be a great football player first. And then if your season's done and you want to help us, uh, we'd love to talk, but we'll talk to Coach Gonzalez about that first. All right, as we wrap up here, does anyone have one more? One more question. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, well, I do have one more. I didn't think I did. Hey, there, there's a, a state basketball tournament in the pit, which um, in this state, you know, the road to the pit is, is what a lot of high school basketball fans always think about. They, they didn't really get the full experience a year ago. This year, they're not getting the full experience. But long story short, the high school basketball in the pit, I don't know what the rules are right now. Are you able to watch any of that um, in person? I mean, walk across the hall and actually watch some of that? Are you allowed? No. So we are allowed to go back out on the road recruiting uh, end of June. So the last two weekends in June, we're allowed to officially go out. The NCAA has lifted kind of those restrictions. Normally we would, um, but because of COVID and everything, we're not allowed to do anything until then. So it kills me that so much good high school basketball will be uh, right around the corner from me. But I also know just from being here for about seven, eight weeks, how much high school teams, uh, the road to the pit, as you said, um, they dream of it. I know that there'll be limited capacity, which as crazy as it sounds, is a step in the right direction. Um, so that hopefully come November, we have full capacity in the pit. Um, you know, so it's great to see. We're slowly moving towards some normalcy. I know it's great for the high school teams to be able to um, play in it. It's a special building. I can't wait to coach in it. I can't wait to get the 100% capacity safely at some point. Um, but no, unfortunately, I can't be here. And since it is high school basketball, let me do a quick follow-up. I'm, I'm not asking for names, but have, have you gotten an indication for down the road, 22 and beyond, um, that there are some kids in the state that, that could be on, on the Lobo basketball radar? Well, what we've, we've looked to do is, I've told my staff, is um, right now is a great time, regardless if they got players or not, um, for next year or whatever. Let me develop relationships with all these great high school coaches. We want them to feel a part of this program. Um, absolutely, when the time comes in June and July where I can go evaluate, um, if there is a player that's good enough um, to play Division One basketball in New Mexico, New Mexico will recruit them. Uh, and make sure that it's very, very important that they understand that they're, they're valued here. Um, I just I haven't seen any of them play, so it's very, very hard for me to judge right now. But I do know come June and July, uh, we will do our very best to evaluate anybody that is good enough that they make sure that they're, they're being recruited by New Mexico. Uh, 